Greetings, and welcome to the 41st episode of Morrowind Modding Showcases. As always, I'm your host, Talk Elf Guy, and this week we have another 13 mods for your viewing pleasure, all bit with a bit of a random theme to them. And I know you guys prefer themed episodes, but we still have a lot of cool looking mods in this video that are definitely worth checking out. And of course, you'll find download links for each mod shown down in the description below. Now, why don't we go ahead and get started with our popular mod of the week? which this week is Epic Balmora by Mike and Ike. Now, Epic Balmora is an attempt to make the city of Balmora, the capital of Great House Salalu on the island of Odenfell, more visually stunning by adding dozens of new buildings around the main city, going up the hilly slopes that surround Balmora. And they do achieve quite a visually impressive effect. As you can sort of see here with my character going through the streets of Balmora, they add a sense of verticality and epicness that one just doesn't normally feel in Elder Scrolls cities. Indeed, whether you're playing Morrowind, Oblivion, or Skyrim, it has to be said that Bethesda has traditionally employed some very lackluster city designs, and Epic Balmora does a lot to make this city really come alive, so to speak. And while this city expansion does offer some visual splendor to Balmora, it should be noted that you can't actually enter any of these buildings. They're solely for aesthetic purposes rather than adding new interiors to explore. Now, that said, they do a great job of making Balmora feel like a real city instead of just a medium-sized town, and it is recommended to play it with a mod like Morrowind Comes Alive that dynamically adds new NPCs to the environment so that you can truly feel like you're visiting a metropolis and not just a dinky little trade town. And of course, while you can't actually enter any of the buildings here, just like any of the other Epic City mods, you can find some hidden secret stuff that's just been placed here or there by Mike and Ike, as a sort of reward for taking the time to explore. And in any event, if you're looking for a mod to make Balmora feel more like a true city, this is definitely one you should check out. And it should be pointed out that this is recommended to be played with Logan's Lalu Bump Map Texture Replacer as well for a really aesthetically pleasing graphical upgrade for the city of Balmora. For this week's House Mod of the Week, we have Mundus, or Morrowind Tortoise, by Wiz1. With this mod, you'll now find a curious device among the possessions of a certain Six House controlled Dwemer Ruin that'll transport you to a larger central chamber with lots of switches and the like, and as the guidebook will explain, these switches can teleport you and the Mundus to different locations on Vardenfell, and of course this whole place is known as the Mundus, which I believe is based on a British television show, though I can't quite recall what the name of it is, um... I think it was Doc, uh... Who is Doc Martin? Yes, I, I think that's the one. Who is Doc Martin? Uh, quite a popular show, I believe, though uh, I don't watch it myself. But anyway, the central chamber, as you just saw, has large dining chambers with naturally more guides to help you find your way around the Mundus. And indeed, the Mundus is a massive place, far larger than its exterior would suggest, with large storage and display halls where you'll find space for just about anything you can gather on your adventures. And there's also a lot more to see in the Mundus than just uh, display halls, as you can see here. There's also a ton of guest bedrooms. So any companions that you may have will find more than enough space for their own personal quarters and equipment. You could easily stuff probably a dozen or more people in here if you really wanted to, and this works really great if you have a companion mod. You also find an alchemy lab where you can sort or unsort any alchemy ingredients you might have and they'll be stored in any of a number of these marked redware pot containers where you can easily access them as needed. And naturally, there's a small master bedroom for your personal use, with a bed, storage, and display space, not to mention a small dining area in case you get hungry. And finally, one of the last things to point out about the Mondas is that it has a rather large prison complex where you can keep any assortment of slaves or cattle if you're a vampire, and really it's most convenient if you don't want anyone escaping. Now, the Mundus isn't entirely free, so to speak. The place runs on souls, and the more you transport around with it, the more souls it'll require. And speaking of transportation, a rather unique feature here is that you can set some of these switches to teleport to unique locations, like particular cities, daedric shrines, or Dwemer ruins, so they'll be easy to get to. 
and you can teleport with the Mundus to just about anywhere, like the small seaside village of Dagenfell, for example. And in order to summon the Mundus, you'll first have to use a spell that you'll get out of finding the first guidebook to the place, and if you're at a valid location, you can summon the Mundus to you and it'll appear nearby, as you can sort of see here. And finally, you can have the convenience of not just a player home, but a home that moves with you and takes you to really wherever you need to go, assuming you can keep it satisfied and fed with enough souls for all of your journeys. This week's gameplay mod of the week is Bury Your Treasure by Neoptolemus. With this mod, you'll now find that outfitters will sell shovels at various shops, uh, like this one in Balmora, and they don't really cost a whole lot, and you can use these shovels out in the wilderness to dig holes by using the sneak key and wielding the shovel like a weapon. These holes act as containers that you can place loot in, so if you're encumbered, instead of just dropping items in a disorderly fashion on the ground, you can now store them in a hole and come back to them later. Likewise, if you commit a crime and are currently running away from the law, you can also dig a hole right outside of town and place your stolen goods there for safekeeping until after the gods get tired of chasing you. A nice, lore-friendly immersion mod. Next up is our town mod of the week, and this week we have Dagenfell updated by Hedgehog12. This mod is sort of a major overhaul of the northern fishing town of Dagenfell completely rearranging the village and giving it an updated new look. Now unlike any proper fishing village, you'll find an extensive docks area with a number of small craft which are presumably used by the local fishermen, as well as an area for storing and hanging fish, with numerous fishing nets that adequately demonstrate the town's primary industry. And a rather cool detail to point out about these uh, fishing nets is that they actually sort of sway in the wind, a little detail that you don't typically see in these sorts of uh, town expansion mods. And you also find that the buildings of Dagenfell have been given new and unique models and textures, including the End of the World Tavern and neighbouring Scout Tower and Shop, adding to Dagenfell's unique appearance and distinctiveness. Now, the town's residential districts can now be found mostly hugging the hillsides over on the northern side of town, and you'll notice the houses are a combination of Nordic and mushroom construction, with a very cool style that makes them stand out among the varying architecture types of Vordenfell, and really, they're a very iconic looking uh, type of architecture. You also find a lot of new details scattered about in terms of hand-placed miscellaneous objects, like the dining tables on this overlook here, with an excellent view of the town and docks. And each of the dwellings in Dagenfell have been given all new interiors, and here you can see that uh, sort of Nordic and mushroom construction from the inside, and I just have to say that I love this combination here. It really is an amazingly well-done style with a lot of character. And here you can see another smaller house, and these are well-decorated interiors, though obviously a bit larger than their old shack counterparts. And you'll notice the textures on the fireplaces in particular really stand out well, and the plank floors are also a nice touch. And these changes extend to the Dagenfell Tower as well, where you'll find an all-new interior design for what was once just a simple thatched tower. But now it also has a unique characteristic design, and the top of the tower is even hollow, allowing you to survey the city around you and enjoy a pretty nice view to boot. There's also some all-new interiors that have been added, like this uh, Dagenfell storage room, where you'll find a number of guest beds and some of the town's storage in one single large chamber and it's uh, fairly nicely decorated as well. All in all, I just have to say that this is a really amazingly well done town expansion and replacement mod that I highly recommend you check out. It does a great job of making Dagenfell a truly unique city all onto its own. For our items mod of the week this week, we have Food of Tamriel by Symbiote Dinosaur. Now, Food of Tamriel sets out to do a number of things, and most notably it tries to populate the various empty plates one finds in taverns with actual food items. Uh, for one reason or another, Bethesda decided to leave all these plates empty of food when they were first designing the game, uh, possibly because they only really had like six people working on the game back then, and didn't have enough time to really spend uh, doing a lot of detailing. But uh, regardless, it is a rather barren scene, and Food of Tamriel helps improve these environments with just a little bit of extra detailing. Now, not only that, but Food of Tamriel also adds a number of new food items to sell from various vendors, such as tavern owners and publicans, who will now offer a wide array of food from 
cumberry cake to mundane fruits like peaches, lemons and cherries. And of course you'll find all these new items have been added to level this, so you'll find them in various containers, usually ingredient sacks or barrels, where you might expect to find such food items. And a fair warning, you will have to merge your level this with this mod. Now another addition is fruit trees added in around the Escadian Isles region. These trees use Vert's tree models, which is a nice bonus. A number of other mods have tried to add fruit trees to Vardenfell before, but they used much older models that are quite dated by today's standards, and Vert's trees do a much better job of blending in. And you can find a variety of fruits on these trees such as lemons, cherries, and peaches that you can loot just like any other kind of container. And here you can see some of the new food items added by this mod, such as bread slices, ears of corn, chickens, cliff racer wings, and much more to make a nice, tasty feast to put on display or consume as you so desire. This week's quest mod of the week is none other than the Illumination of Konyun Dwala by CJW Craigor. This mod starts out with you encountering a Mur in the Aldvalothi outpost, who wants some help with his brother and his rather curious behaviour. This will lead you to a new dwelling just outside of Alvalothi with a rather curious makeshift design. And inside you'll find the semi-crazy brother, surrounded by sources of illumination, and he'll give you a quest to find a legendary light source in exchange for a secret that might lead you to a great reward. And from here this quest will take you to find an old man on an isolated island. He'll tell you a story about the Erendil Carathis, secret caverns that can only be found during the dead of night. And these caverns are a long series of dungeons that have been atmospherically crafted with lots of small details, sudden drops, waterfalls, and uh, plant life, not to mention various creatures such as insects or rats, which is more or less what you should expect from caverns in Vordenfell. There's also a few traps, and the initial document you're given provides you with a riddle on how to navigate the dungeon, though it can be somewhat vague in a number of places, and it will take quite a bit of time to get through the initial dungeon here. It's, uh, there's probably about five to six hours of content in total. And either way, the dungeon is quite scenic, and also filled with a number of undead minions, as it turns out, but uh, these won't put up too much of a fight. Really, characters of almost any level should be able to complete this mod. Probably around level eight or ten is good enough for most of the majority of the fights here. And in any event, this isn't a really a large quest mod, and it mostly revolves around this one dungeon and the puzzles it contains. So I'm going to leave off here so as not to uh, spoil too much of the story and also the puzzles, but suffice to say that it's one of the great small-scale quest mods out there, and well worth checking out. Next up is our Landmass Mod of the Week, and this week we have Wonder Wind by King Moya, aka True the Original Artcom. And this isn't exactly a landmass mod per se, but outside of Castle Karstag, you'll find a new cavern entrance which will lead you down into the Caves of Wind, a sort of pathway that'll lead you to the underground Wonderwind, though it should be noted that it's absolutely filled with quite a few critters who want to kill you in absolutely horrific ways, as you can uh, sort of see here. Once you get to Wonderwind itself though, you'll see why I'm listing this more as a landmass mod than simply a dungeon mod, because Wonderwind is massive, basically it's a large series of glacial chambers deep underground that are, by themselves, practically the size of landmasses, and full of landmarks as you might expect from a landmass mod, like a Daedric Ruin poking out of the ice with lots of curious decorations that you'll uh, find along the exterior, and really it's a very atmospherically created a dungeon, if I do say so myself, and the lighting effects down here are just absolutely superb, and really give you a sense of icy cold of this underground glacial cavern. Now, like I keep mentioning, this cavern is enormous. It'll take you quite a while just to explore the whole thing, and you'll no doubt get sidetracked by many of these side dungeons, and like this Duma Ruin over here, poking out of the depths of just one of the corners here. It's really hard to say exactly how many dungeons Wonderwind contains, since many of them are several levels long, but I'd say there's maybe a dozen dungeons in total, with tons of opponents to face in a variety of different environments, such as uh, caverns, as you can see here, or the aforementioned Daedric Ruins. And these dungeons can span quite a bit of content. I think this uh, Daedric Dungeon right here is about five levels deep and will probably take you a couple of hours just to beat by itself. Assuming you can survive the absolutely brutal assault of so many opponents all at once, and indeed, this is a very difficult uh, mod. It'll take you quite a bit of work just to get through all of it, and 
No doubt you'll need to be a high level to really have any chance of surviving and pack quite a few health potions. Uh, my cheat character actually died nearly a dozen times while exploring Wonderwind, and really if that's anything to go by you'll need to be at least level 40 to level 50 to really have any chance of actually completing all of Wonderwind's mini dungeons. And also, it has to be pointed out that uh, Wonderwind does have a number of boss fights as well, so there's also that additional challenge that you have to look forward to. But anyway, there's a far more to Wonderwind than just dungeons and fighting. Just like any good landmass mod, it also includes a town, the hidden city of Kolmora, home of the Ice Lords who dwell forgotten by the outside world deep in their caverns where you'll eventually stumble upon them after many, many dungeons and lots of fighting and, well, presumably death. The city is built out of a collection of several caverns, each of them visually quite striking, with again that combination of atmosphere and excellent lighting that goes well with the icy cavern walls. Now currently Wonderwind doesn't really contain any quests, and fun fact, that's mostly my fault. Uh, King Moya contacted me about writing up some quests for the mod a long time ago, but with Mod Town 2015 I just wasn't really able to come up with anything in time. But don't fret, uh, once I do have some more time, probably in uh, mid to late 2016, I'm going to try and write up a few quests to sort of give Wonderwind uh, some more things to do. But anyway, I'm sort of getting off topic here. Even without quests, the city of Kalmora is an absolutely beautiful and somewhat mystical place that is definitely worth a visit, all with all the cool architectural designs and places to explore. And you also find a wide variety of shops here, spanning a number of different types of goods, such as an alchemy and enchanting shop, with a number of different things for sale. And another thing you'll notice here is that the interiors are just really well designed with again great atmosphere and a large amount of detail. And there's just all of this and quite a lot more to find in Wonderwind, so it's definitely worth checking out. Just remember that eventually one day this will also include quests at some point as well. Now next up for our NPC mod of the week this week we have Dwarves by Tonsman. With a name like Dwarves, I suspect you can guess what this mod is all about. It adds a new race that you can play as based on the traditional western concept of what Dwarves are. Which is basically to say tiny people, with all the traditional beards and long hair that's typically associated with such fantasy races. And of course they specialize in heavy armor and axes, just like any good Lord of the Rings style Dwarf should. Though the less said about the terrible third Hobbits movie, the better I think. But uh, anyway, Dwarves comes with two different versions, including one with better bodies, and as you can see here, Dwarves are basically based upon the existing human body parts, but shrunk down quite a bit to fit a more Dwarvish frame. And indeed, I imagine it can be quite a bit of fun role-playing as a somewhat smaller build than the typically uniform scale sizes of the traditional Elder Scrolls games. Since there's just really not a whole lot of uh, scale differences with Elder Scrolls races outside of possibly male Bosmers. And this does kind of fill in a gap with the traditional uh, Elder Scrolls fantasy themes. And it is a fun mod to play if you enjoy role playing those particular types of uh, characters. Now this week's new Meshes and Textures mod of the week is Lush Ascadian Isles by Flash3113. And what this mod does is basically replace most of the textures that you'll find in the Ascadian Isles region, such as ground cover textures, uh, rock textures, plant textures, and so on and so forth, with the simple goal of making the Ascadian Isles feel more vibrant or lush with a wide array and mixture of colourful greens. And particularly notable is the new road textures for the Ascadian Isles, which are sort of a grass and moss covered cobblestones. And you also find new farm textures as well for the numerous farms scattered around the Ascadian Isles region. And it has to be said that these new textures really are quite lovely and uh, really very high resolution that work marvelously well alongside Vert's trees, as you uh, can see from this footage here. And I do think that they kind of add an immersive quality to the Ascadian Isles environment. In addition, Lush Ascadian Isles has new textures for many of the al alchemical plants that you'll find in the region, such as uh, cork bulbs, willow flowers, uh, comberry bushes, the gold flowers, uh, whatever they're called. I think they're gold carinets or uh, something to that degree. And uh, not to mention there's also new textures for the mushrooms as well, so everything perfectly matches the region to create a nice and well lush environment. 
And anyway, it's certainly a very pretty and high resolution text replacer that I recommend checking out if you enjoy the beauty of the Ascadian Isles region, which I for one certainly do. And uh, next up we have the Modest Resource Mod of the Week, and this week we have Shannon's Forest Tile set by Shannon. And now essentially this mod adds several different types of forest tile sets that you can use to create a large forest with paths running through them and an interior cell, basically a form of interior landmasses so to speak, which are handy if you're trying to avoid any major landmass conflicts when you're creating an exterior-like environment. These tile sets are fairly dynamic, with uh, semi-realistic roads and have these sort of train bumps you might expect, and there's empty spaces that you can use to place buildings or towns if you so desire, and again, these would be entirely contained in interior cells. Now there's a few other tile sets included, uh, such as a winter-themed forest tile set with snow-covered paths and snowy pine trees that you can use, and something you might notice here is that these trees are sort of two-dimensional, they're kind of like sprite trees in order to reduce potential lag and save on performance. Now do keep in mind that Shannon actually told me he has some more up-to-date forest tile sets than these. That was a uh, few months ago, so it remains to be seen whether he'll release those as a standalone resource at some point or not. But uh, anyway, the last of these tile sets is a sort of Ashlands-themed uh, forest tile set that kind of better matches the Morrowind landscapes that you're familiar with. For our underrated mod of the week this week, we have Boots of Infernal Chaos by Dan Jim. And with this mod, you'll now encounter a unique fire demon in the bowels of Red Mountain who will give you a short quest that, curiously enough, involves ending his life. And to do this, you'll first need to uh, find some alchemical ingredients and then use a specialized sword to strike down the fiery beast. Your reward for doing this dubiously good deed is the Boots of Infernal Chaos, a unique item you are not like to find anywhere else in Tamriel. With these boots, a trail of fire will follow you wherever you go, reminding all around exactly who possesses these amazing boots. Indeed, the trail of fire even follows you into the sky. Quite a fashion statement, if I do say so myself. And really, this is just a fun little mod that adds a little something extra to do in Morrowind. And uh, just sort of moving on, this week's Blast from the Past mod of the week is Party at Burrow's House by Marbred. This mod starts out with a pretty simple premise. Uh, as you leave Sidonine, you'll be invited to a dinner party by Regent Burrow, whose house is conveniently located just a little ways from town in a rather creepy area of swamps in the uh, Bitter Coast region. And as you might suspect, not all is quite what it seems with this dinner party. And indeed, I don't think there's ever been a normal dinner party in any Elder Scrolls game. Uh, something terrible always seems to happen, and I swear, it typically always ends in death of some kind. And in any event, you'll find that the same is true here. The other party guests are either dead, dying, or undead, as indeed the entire place is infested with various undead monsters looking to uh, rip you to parts. And in essence, this mod is basically a dungeon mod where you'll be forced to explore your surroundings in order to figure out what's really going on, and it has to be said that the current owner, the Regent Burrow, is indeed quite an eccentric fellow, and you'll find a number of semi-amusing documents that he's left scattered about his house, and he's rather clearly not entirely right in the head, as can be evidenced by the rather large number of decapitated heads that line his shelves with uh, various dinner utensils sticking out of them. But anyway, this is a sort of small dungeon mod that's just a lot of fun to explore, so I'll just leave off here before I spoil anything major, but it's a fun mod and definitely worth checking out. Finally, for our bonus mod of the week this week, we have Star Trek TNG Uniforms by Theniophiel, and I do apologize if I mispronounce that. So this mod adds a new chest behind the Balmora Mages Guild containing some Star Trek uniforms and an amusing note. Uh, apparently some away team members were greeted and then eaten by a pack of Bosma. And, you know, they're cannibals, of course, so they do tend to do that kind of thing. Uh, really dreadful creatures. But anyway, with this mod you can now finally live your dream of playing Morrowind dressed as any number of types of Star Trek personnel. There's a yellow outfit, blue outfit, and red outfit, all then designed from the next generation Star Trek television show. And wearing the red one might still be a bad idea, but I digress. These are some fine uniforms if you're up for a little Star Trek shenanigans in your game. 
And anyway, I do think the uniforms look pretty good, though obviously they're kind of low resolution since they were released in the uh, early 2000s, I believe. And you might actually remember seeing them in the uh, Making Friends in Morrowind video that was released a while ago. But uh, anyway, that pretty much wraps up all the mods I have to showcase for you guys today. And uh, as always, you can find the download links for each mod shown down in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching, and I do hope you guys leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time of another 13 mods for your viewing pleasure.